Good afternoon folks, happy Monday and welcome back to another episode of Adam's Eats. How are you doing? Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, I had a brilliant Sunday, I went to the Melton Cheese Festival, it was just fantastic, it was just cheese everywhere, right? Just amazing. Anyway, onto the recipe, I'm going to show you how to make one of the first ever recipes I learned how to make properly and that's dauphinoise potatoes or pomme dauphinoise. Now I learned how to make this years ago, back in the days when I wasn't really a very good cook. Um, my culinary expertise extended to emptying a tin of chicken and white sauce into a pan, warming it through and then serving it with microwavable rice. Mm, sounds great, doesn't it? And it was around that time I just had enough and I just thought, right, you've got to learn how to cook. So I picked up Rick Stein's book. One of the first recipes I saw in there was pomme dauphinoise. And I thought, I'm going to make that. And I did, and it turned out absolutely amazing. And I haven't looked back since. Now there's very few ingredients in this recipe, but it does take time. You can't rush a dauphinoise because it needs long, slow cooking. Um, we're gonna put it on gas mark three and leave it for about an hour and a half, two hours, just to gently bubble away. And what you end up with is lovely, gorgeous, soft fondant-like potatoes with lovely garlicky cream running all the way through it, and then a nice crisp top. So that's what we're gonna to make today, folks. Again, following the usual drill, if you hit that pause button, Make a list of those ingredients and we'll get stuck in. Right, so the first thing we need to do is peel and slice our potatoes. I'm using Maris Piper here, but you could use King Edward. So I'm just going to get these peeled. Now once you've peeled them, you need to slice them really, really thinly. Now if you've got a food processor with a slicing attachment, then use that. Or you could use a mandolin. I haven't got either of those things, so I'm going to have to do it by hand. So I'm going to just slice off the end and then just slice nice and thin to about that sort of thickness place those in a bowl and then just repeat that with the rest of your potatoes and once you finish slicing all of your potatoes we're going to get them over to the sink just to give them a quick rinse and once you've given them a quick rinse we're just going to season them with a bit of pepper about six or seven turns something like that a good pinch of salt and we'll move that to one side for a second then we'll get our garlic so I've got three garlic cloves here which I need to peel and finely mince so I could take off those papers and then give them a quick chop and then add a pinch of salt and like I've showed you a million times just using the back of the knife just squash the garlic down to form it into a nice paste and once it looks like that I want to get that into the bowl as well and then you want to get your hands in there and give it a good mix. Make sure the garlic is evenly dispersed all the way through. All that seasoning is coating the potatoes. So once it's mixed through, that is now ready to go in our baking dish. And all you need to do is just pour the whole lot in and then just press it down a bit. Just make sure that the potatoes are nice and evenly spread out. And then just before it goes into the oven, I'm going to finish it off with a bit of grated nutmeg just over the top and that is now ready for the oven. Now that needs to bake in the oven for about an hour and a half on gas mark 3, nice and low, by which time it should be nice and golden and bubbling and the potatoes should be nice and tender. So we'll check back in about an hour and a half and hopefully it should be ready. Well through the miracle of time it's been about an hour and a half so let's get it out of the oven and have a look. Right, here we are then, dauphinoise potatoes. How delicious does that look? Lovely and golden on the top, the cream's all bubbling and nice. Now I've seen quite a few recipes out there that use cheese. Personally, I don't use it because it just doesn't need it. As perfect as it is, it's a very simple recipe, um, but it tastes absolutely marvelous. So I think it's time we serve some of this up. Let's get this on there. Let's get a nice big portion of this dauphinoise potatoes. Yes. That looks amazing. Come on, let's tuck in. And here we have, folks, dauphinoise potatoes. I can't wait to tuck into this. I mean, it's completely fat-free, obviously. Man alive. That is so good. And those potatoes have gone nice and soft and fondant-like. Got a nice kick from that garlic. And then that top, it's just gone nice and crisp, which just adds a nice texture to the whole thing. Now, I'm gonna put this in the Sunday Roast playlist, all right? Because, a lot of you out there would have it with a Sunday roast. Um, and that's fine. But me personally, I have it either on its own with some salad or some steamed veg, or occasionally I'll put it with a chicken breast or a bit of grilled meat or a steak. 
Um, I tend not to have it with stuff with lots of gravy because, you know, cream and gravy? Mm, some might like it, I don't. Well, what do you think then? Dauphinois potatoes, it's actually quite simple. The hard part is just waiting for it to cook. You can't rush Dauphinois, you've got to give it that long, slow cooking. If you rush it, you'll split the cream and you'll end up with just a big mess. And that about wraps up today, folks, so thanks for tuning in and watching. Uh, please like, share and subscribe if you enjoy my videos and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of the recipe. As usual, stick around at the end because there'll be some links to some of the videos and that all-important subscribe button. I hope you have a fantastic week and I'll see you guys on Friday for more tasty fun and frolics. And bye for now.